So we are trying to catch a fresh rose so we can show you how we clean one to make our cooking segment here on Wild Fired. If you're, it's generation after generation being raised around this water that's passed on to the father and then passed on to you or uncle or somebody, and they teach the rest how to do it and what it's all about. You know, my son knows how to do all these things, and hopefully his son will too. That's why I love what you're doing with this wildfire TV. It's, there's so much in the outdoors that, that the kids forget today or don't ever get to experience to where you can shoot the video on it and make it beautiful, you know, and make it something that people can refer back to, like you said. We are in the middle of Contentnia Creek, and Contentnia Creek runs from all the way from Wilson to the mouth of the Noose, or out to the Noose River, and it is about halfway between Kenston and Newburn. I am trying to catch a hickory shad. They are a nice size fish. They get the range from the world record is around three pounds and four ounces, but the average of what you'll catch is about a pound, pound and a half. Sometimes you get into big rows and the rows of the female with eggs. This is what, the, they're actually ocean going fish, but they return after they're two years old to go up the river to spawn. In the spawning run, if you'll look around us, there's a ton of flooded timber in this flooded Low grounds is what we call it, which is the floodplain uh, of the lower end of a river or the delta. That area is where the, the shad spawn at. They literally go into the roots and the stumps and the, and the uh, aquatic vegetation that is off the roots and they bump it and leave their eggs. And then the males come through, which are a smaller shad, and they reduce their sperm that goes on to it and that's what hatches. So as long as your river's high like this, that's a good thing for reproduction. But it's a bad thing for catching them because now you've got acres and acres and acres of woods that your fish can be in, and we're fishing in the creek channel. And that be a book. I ain't got the horsepower he got on the line, so you might want to get that net. Yeah. I don't know. Pretty big fish, but yeah, that's a book. Oh, man. Uh, so much fun, and they fight so well. I mean, if you've never caught a shad in your lifetime, it's worth a trip to go find a place to go. They do it all the way from Florida to Maine. March 1st to April 10th. Where we're at now is a historical ramp that's been here for many, many, many years. Uh, it is a small peninsula that sticks out in the tent of the creek, and it's called Gaston's Landing. Gaskins owns it. Uh, Mike Gaskin and his family own the ramp and we're members of it uh, in the community. And it is right outside of Griffin. And Griffin is the home of the uh, Shad Festival. You gotta hold your mouth right. That's what I always told my daughter. She'd take, cook that mouth up there right funny looking. You cut it like that, it'll work. <laughs> And the Shad Festival is a, a very old festival, uh, according to North Carolina's history festival. Oh, Eric had one on. You still got him? They called the poor man's tarpon. You know, uh, the the whole we have a fishing part of it. There's always the first shad caught each year, and he has to be caught in this region. There's yeah. always the youngest kid to catch a shad, the first shad this year, you know every year. And there's that, also a woman's category. Happened, right? yeah, oh yeah, it's already happened. And matter of fact, Tyra's the one that's got, the girl that's here with us today, she's the one that's got the Lady Chad uh, title right now. Darn buck. Under buck. Hmm? Under buck. So, you know, and it's, it varies. Houston, my son carried the youngest for four years in a row when he was a boy. So. Yeah, and like I said, uh, he uh, we always caught the first shad with him because and the biggest because he was you know always out there with me, and uh, like I said, it's a great event. Now, a lot of people can come down and enjoy it, 
Uh, the fish in itself is a lot to learn. They got mouth of the river. This creek, the mouth of Contentia, where it comes into the Noose River, is one of the top producing areas for hickory shad outside of what this world famous Pitch Kettle Creek, which is down the river about another six miles. But this is some of the finest, finest shad fishing you'll have because of the way the creeks and rivers are designed here. Back when I was a kid, there was places up and down the river that you could actually go to and eat herring where they cook them right on the bank and you could take a quarter and buy a sandwich with a herring in it. You know, but that's a long time ago. <laughs> and white shad. Yeah, white shad's that great big sucker. And yeah, he's right, it makes one heck of a good fish too. Yeah. This is a white shed, y'all. That is a row. Look, see the yellow secretion here coming out of the belly as I squeeze it down. Maybe you can see a little bit of it and also the red anal area. There is a strip of row in there. They get a lot bigger than that, but we will definitely be eating this row here. And that's a huge, that's a huge fish compared to the regular hickory shad. Oh man. About time to eat, y'all. But well, we're gonna find out what makes these shad popular. I'm gonna come in right between the front fins and keep my knife real level. As you see, I'm coming down real level all the way down. I want it to stay in the casing that rows in. That's the key to it. There ain't nothing any better. And this is a white shad. All right, here we got the um, hickory row shad, and I'm gonna remove the uh, row sack out of this one. I use a little bit different tool than what Big T use. I try to use my hawk bill here because it kind of helps me keep from busting the row. I pretty much stick it in there the same. Yeah, the texture, but you gotta kind of gotta like you gotta like fish, and you know it's not for everybody. But I mean, basically, we just use whatever bread or you pre prefer, anything, make your own. Basically, just throw them in there and bread them up. Let that grease get hot. Well, I pretty much let it get hot and then drop a little bit of bread in there when it's bubbling up, frying pretty good, and it should pretty much drop the, uh, drop the eggs in there. This yeah. is outdoor cooking, you know what I mean? <laughs> no measurement. No, no measurement. You said make your own bread or uh, what's that consist of? Well, you can take flour. Salt, pepper, you know, cayenne pepper. Depends on your heat, what kind of heat you like. It's going to be that way. Just a little bit of black pepper. Just a little bit. Maybe salt. Grab one of them bad boys and lay right there like that. Don't about other people. I like a lot of vinegar. I don't know about other people. That's the real deal. Come try one.
Creek, creek bank, man, you come down here and catch them fresh and then fry them up like this. It's not high fat after all. Found this out here good. 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 You gotta have a good seasoned frying pan. And there's an art to season them, and I got a feeling before it's over with, we're gonna probably get that. And we're gonna take and line it up with this bacon. I'm sorry. You're right. I'm sorry. This is a recipe that's fit for kings. Where'd this recipe come from? You know, my daddy made it when I was a boy. And I believe his daddy made it when he was a boy. So I'm gonna say this recipe is old enough I can't tell you the history of where it came from. It's been a long time ever since they've been able to get a rod and reel and catch a shad or a net and catch a shad. I believe they've been doing it. Now, we got to actually cool the frying pan. The difference between what Eric did and I'm doing, I'm gonna salt and pepper this graciously and we're gonna coat it with pepper good because you virtually only get one side of it. Okay, now you've got them coated good and you'll actually taste a little bit of that flavor. So now they're gonna go in now, that we got our grease down a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and set them in there. We don't want them to fry too fast. You just slide them right in. You got to stand back because them little eggs are wet and they're going to pop. They'll soon cool the grease off. Yeah, cut it off so that the, the, the grease will cool. If you get it too hot, then your row, uh, yeah, I, turn, I took the bacon out and I turned, I turned the heat off completely. So the grease will cool down, okay? It's okay that it's browning it right now, but the problem is you don't want the roe to cook too fast. Rows are thick and it takes a little while to get the grease and or get the cooking to, to penetrate all the way through. So we're gonna let them sit right there for a second. Now that it's quit popping, uh, and that'll tell you when your temperature's right. You slide your frying pan to the side, relight your burner, now that we got our grease cooled down a little bit, we can go ahead and fire it back up again. Okay. Now we're not going to turn this real high. We're going to let it get to the point we hear it sizzle. And then we'll back off because it's going to take three to five minutes for this row to cook all the way through. And as we see the color change on top of this row, you see how yellow it is. It'll start turning a, a brownish color or whitish color on the edges and that'll tell us that we're getting good penetration. Yeah, once they get a little bit brown, I'll turn them over. If you're cooking at home on a frying pan, you gotta be careful. And it would, but you deep fry them, they, they, you know, they're inside, so they don't do it, you know. Another reason why you want them without the casing is broke, that helps hold it. All right, we're starting to get a little, a little brown around the edges. So I'm gonna make them pop some more and turn them over. Another reason why I cook this recipe outside. Okay, now we got our eggs cooked all the way through good. We'll take lay them in another plate. Okay, and again, we're gonna cool that frying pan off one more time. Look at me, drop the right over. Okay, now, oh. <laughs> there you go. Look at it, you got it all over you, but you got no shell in there. You done good. Uh, 
Okay, the fire is down low so that it shouldn't cook but too fast. We're gonna add a little bit of salt. And we're gonna add a little bit of pepper. Okay, and we're gonna do the salt one more time. All right, now we're gonna take the bacon that we got. And we're gonna crumble it up. We're gonna put the roe in there, whole, just like you see it, but we're gonna cut it up while we stir. So it mixes in, okay? So now, we're gonna take our roe and kinda of chop it. So it mixes in, okay? So now, we're gonna take our roe and kinda of chop it. Now we're gonna make regular old scrambled eggs. And it is good with cheese added. Matter of fact, you can add a couple different cheeses if you choose, and that works real well. Uh, if you're a fan of hot sauce, you can actually cook some of that hot sauce into it. Cut down that fire just a little. You don't want to cook eggs too fast. Helps to have a good seasoned frying pan. It's best to do it with bacon grease though. That's what it's called, rolling eggs. Now, it might not be solid enough for you, but. You can't even tell the rose in there. That's great. It is, isn't it? It's fabulous. It's hard to beat. And the bacon. It just not, makes it. I'm not used to having bacon in my eggs. You know, normally it's on a biscuit or something, but. Yeah, yeah. So it's great. I mean, that's a great flavor, texture to it. It gives it that just that little bit of kick to the eggs. It makes the eggs a whole lot better tasting. That's right. Describe. Describe. Now, this is something I would travel for. <laughs> I'm serious. I'd drive a couple hundred miles for this. It's good stuff. So we'll see y'all in a minute on, a, on, on something else before, here, Jordan. Before we went back to refresh. <laughs> to the surface, it could be a rock. Yeah. It's shad. Is there any little ones in there? Cooking that, oh, the chips, they are chips. I should have left the glasses on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's about the best way to eat hickory chips and herring, but we we can we can't uh, use herring that we catch around here anymore. But what's that? State law, no doubt. But they get them out of South Carolina. We're going to have people cooking herring out here. The same guys are going to do it. Chad told. I got out for my first time today. I'm going to try to cook. How'd you like that? Good job. There's something blue in there the other day, man. Oh, yeah. They said, we still got a little bit more to go. Well, you look like you're doing good. Yeah, he is. Just, just, uh, I can talk all the junk I want, really. I well, listen. see, we put this being bulletproof. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> that stops for when you get about two. Why not? Way. Mm -mm. Man, a good hot sauce. 
Fried up some hickory shad chips. Cut it real thin and fried it until it started floating. First time trying it out. Bones in it and everything. A little bit of vinegar and hot sauce. Out of everything I had today, this is probably the best. And even the cameraman agreed. Kind of eat around the backbone, but the, the bones just kind of melt in your mouth. Wildfire. Now you water. know what shad's all about. Now yeah. you know how to eat them. You know how to cook them. You know what to do with them. It's, it's almost mid-March, and that is the peak of the shad season, to be honest with you. Well, we've had a great time coming out here today, trying all these recipes with you, and yours specifically was one of the better ones. And... Well, thank you for that. I, I, like I said, I eat it quite a bit every year. Uh, it's not one of those that I get tired of, to where the row itself by itself, and also the the uh, the, the row that we would, or the fish, like the little, what they call fish chips that you just ate. Yeah, they're phenomenal. They're great, but they also, the flavor will stay with you a while. You don't have to have them every day, but they are great. Yeah, they are. And uh, But like I said, it, this, that's what that's what Shad's all about. And everything we do with the Shad is is, is, is very historical and very, it's, you know, it's a strong heritage behind it. A lot of, a lot of competition down here too on oh, the dock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as you can tell here, and boats go by one right after the other. First come, first serve. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you better get out early and get your spot on the river. We appreciate yeah. everybody watching. Stay tuned for more Wildfire TV. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell button. Tracy yep. Blake. Nothing but like, make Thanks sure you sir. do subscribe. Subscribe. He ain't, he's, he just now scratching the surface. There ain't going to be so <laughs> many videos. Y'all ain't going to know how to watch them all. We've already got the next six months and recipes planned out, so. That's right. Y'all hang in there. Yeah, I guess so. I, yeah, I slicked it back and uh, yeah. Well, I don't know about you looking cool. Uh, sunglasses are out. Uh, I mean, it's it, it's just a matter if you can get by the grit of the sand, the little tiny tiny eggs. It's all about texture. All about texture. Okay. Well, if you if you're eating for texture, we're in trouble. That's what we call a floater. <laughs> you might better eat the bacon and leave the rest of it alone. <laughs> yeah, bro, right there. Oh, that bro. No, you got to put him tall. back. <laughs> I'm pulling back. Uh -huh. I'm not pulling back. Please, I can pull him back. <coughs> Man, when's the season for us? I want to throw it back. You don't have a season right now. I didn't moment. think there was. Go down to Pier and throw him out. One of my friends was saying that there was a season. I told them that there was. Well, they opened the season back up in the Roanoke River for uh, a... Yeah, but not river. around here. No. What they talking retarded. about doing it? I don't know. Good job, man. <laughs>